Today's video is going to take you inside my mind as I look into the lab. Uh, I just want to break some stuff down for you guys. So, this is kind of an introduction here to some of the things we're going to be doing on the channel. Basically, what I would love to do with the channel is kind of take this Scheme of the Week series and move it into uh, a little bit of a different type of video uh, that should be more conceptual and better for you overall. Um, but anyway, what I want to do here is show you uh, America's defense. So America's defense is this quarter, two-man quarterback contain, uh, and then what they'll do is they'll man line and press because two-man under is really difficult to beat. Uh, and so the foundation for any passing system is to be able to beat two-man under. Um, okay, so so that's first and foremost something I, I think we need to understand. Now, secondly, uh, we're in the Arizona Cardinals playbook. We're working on some stuff for our Arizona offensive guide. Uh, one of the formations that I have access to that I don't really talk about much in the guide is the single back win tight end chief. Um, and this is something that was actually very effective uh, in years past. And so, you know, obviously we should look at it and just give it a look at and, and see if we can maybe do something with it. So one of the plays that we know um, is something we like to use uh, in the years past is the underplay. So in the, when you go into the lab, what you want to do is you want to kind of set the defense up. So man line press, that's what, the, that's what America's doing with this defense. And, and then you want to snap the ball, and we're just going to take a sack. And so all the, let all the routes develop. And then we'll either throw it away or we'll take a sack, whatever is more time conservative. Okay. Now, the next thing you want to do is you want to go into the instant replay feature and say, okay, let's figure out this formation. Let's see what we can do to make this better. Okay. So the couple routes on this play that we know is the corner route. We want to see if there's any unbumpable routes. So first thing we notice is that this route to James Jones is unbumpable. It's a drag route, so therefore it is unbumpable. Another thing we notice is that... Um, Eddie Lacy's route is like an option route, and so against man coverage, it's going to cut to the inside and see that he actually gets inside position against his uh, his linebacker. The next thing to understand is that both tight ends, of course, are going to be unbumpable, but the question is, do they beat man? And here we see that we have a post route, looking, which looks like we could throw an inside pass lead, uh, obviously, if the yellow zone is not in that position. Now that we've done that, we want to go through and go through and just like throw all the routes. We just want to say, okay, let's throw all the routes and see what they can do uh, against man. So the first route that we want to look at is this drag route to Jones. And we see that we can pass lead that to the right, and it beats man coverage to the outside. Now the next route that we noticed that we noticed probably has a chance of beating man-to-man -man coverage is this route to Eddie Lacy as it cuts across the middle of the field. So when it's man, he's going to cut to the inside. With an inside pass lead, you see we're able to deliver the ball for a quick five-yard gain. And then the last route that we noted that possibly could beat man coverage is this R1 route to Rogers cuts over the middle. And there we see that it does not beat man-to-man -man coverage um, as it cuts over the middle of the field. Let's try it one more time to make sure that that's correct. And sometimes it has to do with route running. And really in this year's game especially, it has a lot to do with route running. Here we see this time it still doesn't really get great separation against man. So now we know there's really only two routes on this play that beat man-to-man -man coverage. So with that in mind, what I like to do from there is do some different motion uh, snaps. So one thing that we used to know that works was motioning the drag out three or four steps and then back to the inside. Here it doesn't get anything special, so there's, you know, obviously there's nothing I can do with it there. Uh, another thing that we may try is a half step motion. So maybe a half step to the outside to give him a little speed burst off the outside. And there you see it actually does work, and we are able to beat man, but not too much. Not too much different. Um, one other thing I want to try is motioning Rogers to the left side of the screen. One of the things that's interesting is when we motion him to the left side, his route's not going to change, and so he's going to stay on this little um, outside kind of angled streak, uh, angled angled corner route. So we want to obviously set the defense up, man line, and press. And here we're going to see that. Um, you know, we can maybe aggressive catch it, but it really doesn't beat man. So with all of that knowledge that we've now gained of this play, um, something else is uh, interesting to employ is can we get Randall Cobb on bumpable? So one thing also that you might consider is maybe tweeting Randall Cobb on a hitch pattern. Hitch patterns this year are unbumpable, and so we could snap throw that against man coverage with a low pass lead. There you see a quick snap throw, and we identify that it's man, and we're able to deliver the football. Another thing to note is that, okay, if that route is on the field, can it still beat man? And you see it actually opens up this drag route because it's a little pick and rub for James Jones to come across the formation. So now we have a nice interesting little play here on the left side. 
Um, and now let's try smart routing Randall Cobb's route and see if we can still get the same result from James Jones. So we smart route Randall Cobb's route, we still get the same result from James Jones as he crosses and is able to really crush man-to-man, -man. so that's something interesting to me. So now on the left side, that's probably what I'm going to want to do, because when we smart route that hitch route, it's going to make it go a little bit deeper. It's actually going to be a threat, and we're just going to low pass lead it, and you're going to see Randall Cobb is able to, uh, to make that play. Okay, so a couple of things to recap here so far that we've done is that we have uh, ran the play and uh, against just a you know America's defense and that is the quarters normal two man under contain two man quarterback contain that's probably the hardest defense to beat in terms of pass coverage and so we want to make sure that we can at least beat that defense with it um, and then the next thing to note um, is that we wanted to see how we could work with the motion snaps are there any motion snaps that are going to be beneficial with that drag um, or with any of the routes in general um, but the only player we can motion on the play is the tight end, or we can also motion um, the uh, receiver on the left side in the slot. So those are the two motions we noted. And what we found was that we want to take Randall Cobb and we want to make him um, beat man-to-man -man coverage. We're going to put him on a hitch and smart route it. Okay, so those are the two things we're going to do. Now the ne next step is that this tight end on this flat route, really to me that doesn't have any use on this play the drag route's actually going to serve as a flat so maybe I'm inclined to to potentially put him on either a slant um, or maybe a fade something like this probably a fade um, for zone coverage and things like that so so now let's try this this final version of the play so what we're going to do is um, we're going to motion what I would probably do with this play actually is take this tight end and motion him to the outside and create a one-on-one -on, -one on the outside. So if I was a mutt, you know, I'd have a, a highly rated guy, or or you know, if we, if you don't have a good spec catch guy, maybe put him on a little comeback route. What you're gonna find is this comeback route's gonna beat man, as it, or actually it's not gonna beat man. I lied because the tight end's route running is rather rather low. But what this is gonna do, if you put him on a fade, it's gonna force the defense to pay attention to this motion, and so this motion really. Is going to say, okay, if you don't, if you don't have a safety, so say for example they are user controlling Micah Hyde because they know that no deep route comes from that right side. When all of a sudden there's a deep route, and if we just lob it up with a high pass lead, wow, Aaron Rodgers, what a terrible throw. But if we just lob this up with the high pass lead, normally um, a good tight end will come down with this. Now, you know, this one, the Packers tight end may not be quite uh, what we're looking for, but we may want to put like a we may want to put a tight end from another team in there, but we'll see here. So just run this play. No safety coverage up top. And we just aggressive catch. And you see that the size advantage, the catch and traffic advantage, and the spectacular catch advantage. Normally we're going to be able to get an advantage mismatch by motioning that tight end to the outside. So that's um, pretty much what I would do with this play. So I would take it. I'd motion the tight end on a fade to the outside. I'd take Randall Cobb, and I would put him on a hitch route. Depending on the situation, if it's like first and ten, I would smart route it. If it's you know anything less than first and ten, I probably wouldn't. And what we're going to see here is the first read on this play is going to be James Jones as he crosses the formation against man-to-man. -man. And you're going to see that we're going to be able to you know easily deliver that ball for yardage. Um, the next read on this play, we'll show you is going to be Randall Cobb on a smart route of hitch route and we're going to low pass lead that and um, wow Aaron Rodgers is having some struggles we may not actually want to low pass lead because of that right there so we may just normal pass lead you don't necessarily have to low pass lead them they, they normally normal pass lead would be just fine here we're going to throw a high pass lead. You'll see that you know, it works both ways. Honestly, I may be more inclined to throw a high pass lead because, because it's going to be your, your receiver is the only person that's going to be able to get it. And we'll show you. When we motion Jones to the left side, that's something else you can always work in. It's just a, si a simple motion of Jones to flip the sides, and it really changes the dynamic of the play. But anyway, um, like I said, if we want to put, if we want to leave Bachman in the seams, um, what you're going to see here is he's just going to work that seam, and then we're going to, like I said, our second read is going to be Eddie Lay or that hitch route. Our third read will be Eddie Lacy. Obviously, the tight end is just a clear out route, and then our final read on this play is going to be the tight end over the middle of the field, 
And uh, what you're going to see here is as a result of Eddie Lacy's route, the tight end is actually going to be able to, um, you know, come over the middle of the field. And he's not going to beat zone, but he may be something that we can use against cover three. So when we audible to cover three, and we run the same same place, same basic play, what you're going to see is this tight end route. Well, he didn't get it. He's going to serve as a clear out route for the drag, basically, um, is what he's going to do. Now, another thing real quick to note about the cover three is Eddie Lacy's route is going to hitch up. You see he's going to hitch up right there. So that's something that's very nice about this play. So uh, there's just a lot in this play that I wanted to teach. Um, and there's really, you know, I didn't, I haven't practiced this play at all. I just picked a play at random and uh, just kind of went through how I would develop it. And in combination with that, the inside zone you have from this, very thing, a lot of things you can do to get creative with this offensive scheme. Um, I'll leave a link. I, I know a friend of mine, or not a friend of mine, but a friend of Z Farrell's Impstack uh, was running this, the Ace Bear Chief. I think he's ran it for the last couple of years. But um, it's a pretty interesting little offensive play, and I've had it in the Arizona playbook for a while and never really messed with it. So I definitely just wanted to at least show you uh, some of my concepts when I lab, and I think that'll be a good series. Another thing to note is this quick pass out of the backfield. This is something we used in Madden 13 that was really effective, but in Madden 16 it's the same thing. It's just a little quick pass, so definitely something you can use. But like I said, I just wanted to show this. Um, not to show the play necessarily, but I just wanted to show the process by which I developed the play. So if you're interested in this series, guys, this is actually something I would like to do with the Scheme of the Week series, is I would like to take you inside the lab every day as I develop the scheme. Um, and it's really the heart of the scheme, um, and it's going to revolve around the videos being a little bit longer, but what's going to be cool about it is I think they'll actually be a lot more impactful um, than me just saying, hey, this play works. I'm going to actually teach you why this play works, and then teach you how to... Uh, how to how to uh, develop it in in your own uh, in your own gameplay. So, like I said, um, you know this is just a really good little formation here. Um, there's a lot of things that we can do from it. We talk zone man beating kind of principles, but in in the lab today we were just like uh, working on man beaters, um, you know, and things we can do from this formation to beat man. Obviously, once you have the things that you can do to beat man, you want to combine those with the things that you can do to beat zone, and and then you're going to be able to rock with it. So, um, but anyways, guys, let me know what you think about this series. I really think it could be something that's pretty impactful to the community um, but so just wanted to break down a video uh, and, and show you this it's maybe like a weekly series that I do uh, where I just break down one play um, or what it could turn into is something where I could do it with the scheme of the week series so thanks for your time guys hope you enjoyed the video and if you guys have any questions about the things that I discussed in the video be sure to leave a comment in the, sec in the comment section below